Researchers have created a metal that's more durable than titanium and is on par with platinum. It's also made of relatively cheap elements and may be very important to engineering. Think about when us humans discovered iron, and then we discovered steel. And now we have things like titanium and platinum is used in cars. But platinum is a precious metal and we can't just make more. Also, carbon chips may replace silicone. We'll talk about it. I have been really excited for this one because I keep telling you guys about graphene. It's a material made of carbon that's super conductive. And graphene can be fashioned into synthetic neurons, some so similar to our own that they can operate in a biological environment, react to things like epinephrine, and be interfaced with our own neurons. So why not make them into computer chips? They're also 80% more efficient than silicon transistors. I know, we've been talking about silicon-based life and silicone uprisings, but it may actually be carbon. Carbon, the thing that makes the intelligent robots. Carbon and silicon are very similar in terms of their chemical composition, but I am carbon-based life, so maybe I'm just a little bit human-centric. As for our new metal, it's made of chromium and molybdenum and a tiny little bit of silicon. This can be fashioned into a material that has the surface oxidation temperature on par with platinum. I'm talking over a thousand degrees Celsius. When we think about titanium, which a lot of our strongest stuff is made out of, and incidentally my earrings, that has a surface oxidation temperature of 600 degrees Celsius, so nearly twice as sturdy to heat. This new metal will not oxidize under normal conditions, and it's incredibly durable. The researchers who made it have been suggesting that they could be used in things like spacecraft that have to go in and out of atmosphere and undergo a whole lot of mechanical stress. Researchers have been trying to do this for a very long time. This may be the answer. Palladium, for example, is extremely useful when it comes to things like satellites. But it is an incredibly rare element. It's one of the most rare elements on Earth. You might have thought it was gold or platinum, but no. Palladium. And yeah, the new metal is not quite on par with platinum, which has a melting point of around 3,000 degrees Celsius. But it is better than titanium. This is really exciting and it's showing us that major advancements can still be made even today. Not everything has been discovered, not anywhere close. And I just really want to talk about it. Graphene can be interfaced with our neurons. It can also be combined with biological components. If you can make a neuron, you can make a nervous system. If you can make a nervous system, you can make a brain. And if you can make a synthetic brain, we could potentially, yeah, have singularity in the biological sense. So when biology and technology is not separate, a little bit different than singularity in the mathematical sense. But I really do think that this is how we're going to achieve real consciousness. And there's other really cool stuff with this, like repairing damaged spines, for example. They've already done that in mice. It's just not in humans yet because researchers have to move into monkey models and then they have to go through clinical trials. It is a very slow process and does bum me out because there's so much more that could be done for medicine that just isn't. So it goes into the technology sector because that's where most of the money is. Let's face it, people who need these kinds of medical advancements usually do not have the money to spend to get this stuff to market. But if you have 50 million people who are going to purchase a product, yeah, R&D can be justified. Also, it's probably good that I have not won the lottery because I would definitely try to make conscious robots and I'd probably blow all the money, to be fair. Technology has a long way to come. But little by little, we're getting there.